Hi guys, Dane here and welcome to another weekly reading vlog. In my usual fashion, I have literally just finished off like filming the outro to my old one. So I have made no progress on Lock and Key, a Welcome to Lovecraft by Joe Hill, volume one of the graphic novel series. But I hope to have an update for you tomorrow because I'll probably finish it tonight. And then I have volume two over there. Made aubergine katsu curry, very nice. What's going on Biggie? Of course she looks shifty. There's just been a car crash outside the house. The police showed up, but uh, yeah. I made pasta con broccoli so, um, with vegan cheese. I've just seen that. And particularly in the back, I love... Yeah, I know what it looks like, but it's chocolate and chia seed pudding. We are here for vegan pizza and drinks and a play. And lemonade. Mainly the pizza. Yeah, mainly the pizza. <laughs> Thing for that YouTube thing. Oh. Oh, so where are we, back? We're at the Oakwood Station. In the studio. Where, where you work. The yeah. studio where you work. And we're going to see Watson and Malone on ice. Yeah. And there's the sound people. There's a seat reserved for the usher. There we go. Oh, look at that. Look at the shadow. There we go. Oh, awesome. That might be happening. What are we gonna tell your mama? I made a sweet potato tikka masala and it's very spicy and I'm watching girls incarcerated. Yeah, jailbirds. I've made a mess but also some delicious food, these empire biscuits. They're heart shaped, look. I'm gonna eat one now, they look amazing.
We're at the Feast Without the Beast at the Fir Tree in Oxford. And Bex is here, and we, and we have Mushroom Wellingtons. And uh, let's go, let's tuck in. Don't use all the gravy, or I'll, or I'll cut you. <laughs> you can always get a bit of Yeah, no, it's fine, you can have some more as well if you want. Lovely. The finished result with the, with the gravy on. How is it? Is it good? It's, it's hot. Good. <laughs> That was good. How are you doing over there? I'm, I'm going to do it. I'm going to be. Are you going to do it? Mm -hmm. Good, because we're going to document whether you do it or not. So oh, no. <laughs> if you don't do it, then you'll be ridiculed to the shame for eons. Eons. It's mm. a very long time. Mm -hmm. It is a historic moment. You ready? No, I, 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 won't, I won't film your face because I, I know the expressions you're going through right now. <laughs> That was good and that was that was well done. All right, so what's for dessert? <laughs> oh man! Oh, it's blurry. Oh man! Seriously, my internet is so bad. So I went to Oxford and I left my latest vlog uploading while I left, and I came back and it was still only on eighty-six percent. And then I tried to finish the upload and it just started from 0% again. So now I'm trying to do my latest, my cat, uh, my cat picks my TBR video, which means my internet isn't working. So I'm listening to vinyls. Anyway, it is Monday. I'm wearing my cool new t-shirt. This was sent to me from Cam from Wolfshot Publishing. I'll link to his channel below and also his store where you can get one of these and various other cool designs. Uh, as I said, I went to Oxford yesterday. We just chilled, to be honest. Um, we went out for dinner at uh, the fir tree and had the feast without the beast which was like it was a full vegan menu so that was nice had a vegan sunday dinner and then went back to bex's and her housemate john was in the living room so we just lay in her bed and watched um the documentary about michael jackson and i did a bit of editing of my my novel meat so that's exciting so it's now Monday, I'm pretty much going to love you and leave you, but I want to update you on some of the books I've been reading. I've got a big stack here to go through. So, because I've been lazy and have not filmed any updates. Well, let's start with these two. No, these three. So we have Joe Hill and Gabriel Rodriguez. Uh, Lock and Key, Volume 1, Welcome to Lovecraft. Volume 2, Crown of Shadows, and Volume 3, Head Games, and uh, they've all been 4 out of 5 so far, actually the most recent one, Head Games, ended in what I thought was quite an interesting point, but then basically the reason I haven't read more is because Bex has got the other three and she's been reading ahead of me, so she's just finishing off number 4 at the moment, and she said it wasn't as good, so... Uh, I don't know, maybe I'll find it different because I'm pretty excited about that one because of how number three uh, left off. But yeah, basically it's a graphic novel by Joe Hill who is Stephen Kingson based in like this mansion where you have all these different keys that do different stuff. So, so far they've been kind of themed uh, and then apparently in the next one we get like a new key per episode which is very cool and it, all these keys do different stuff. I'm explaining this terribly but we've got a lot of books to go through. So I'm going to move on to this, which is a Charles Dickens anthology, and this is edited by Kathleen Wood. And what's cool about this is it's specially commissioned by Rothman Cigarettes. Um, I got this from a charity shop. It's just a collection of different excerpts from different Dickens books. Some of the well-known ones, like Oliver Twist and David Copperfield, but also some less well-known ones. And uh, yeah, I mean, it only took me like, I actually started out reading it as a bedtime book and then switched it over as a main book because I'm rapidly finding I do like Dickens. I've read Oliver Twist and A Christmas Carol and a few other bits and bobs. And I really enjoyed his uh, Penguin Little Black Classic as well. So I'll probably read another one of his full novels soon. Then we have Agatha Christie, Hercule Poirot's Christmas. Fairly forgettable to be honest, but it was a decent enough mystery and because like, although it obviously it is set at Christmas and even the dates in it are like over Christmas, it wasn't overkill. Uh, you could read it at any point in the year. And I understand the same is true of Halloween Party, which I also have on my TBR. You don't need to read it at Halloween to get to, you know, to really enjoy it. So um, just because it was on my TBR and I wanted to, to knock it off, I decided to get to it. And yeah, it was like a 3.5 out of 5. I don't want to go into to, to it too much. I've actually read another Agatha Christie, which I'll get to in a second, which sort of stands out in my memory more. 
Then we have Alien by Alan Dean Foster. This is the novelization of the movie. Alan Dean Foster is Todd the Librarian, sort of one of his favorite authors. He wrote a book called Midworld, which Todd loves and which I've read and which I did enjoy. So this is my second Alan Dean Foster. And I started reading this and for like the first 10 pages, I was like, oh no, it's gonna just be like this typical sci-fi novel. Because we have all of this, this, um, like they're just pressing buttons and stuff and the dialogue's just a bit cliche. There's a lot of this weird dialogue where it's like, plug in the SNJ via the auxiliary on the NTU. And it's just like, oh, please don't do that. But um, yeah, it got really, really good. And actually, I rewatched the movie after reading this and I think I prefer the novel. And I do like the movie, but this is so well written. And there's just stuff like, you know, the famous like scene of the alien bursting out of uh, Kane's chest. In this, what Foster did really well, he didn't just write what he saw from the movie. So he was like, one of the things that really stuck with me, he was talking about the smell. Cause obviously this alien's just gone through his bowels. So it's like, it smells like, you know, sewage and excrement and stuff. And I just thought that was really well done. And the suspense in it was great as well. Just, yeah, I definitely want to read. I gave it 4.25 out of five and uh, it could be in my top 10 of the quarter. I'm not sure yet. While we're on the subject of movies, I've got this. This is William Shakespeare's Star Wars by Ian Dersher. Uh, Verily, A New Hope. So this is literally like a full length Shakespeare play, but of Star Wars. And it's fantastic. Just some of the lines in it really got me, uh, like they just made me laugh as well. Okay, so this is C-3PO starting uh, Act 1, Scene 1. Now is the summer of our happiness, made winter by this sudden fierce attack. Our ship is under siege, I know not how. Oh, hast thou heard? The main reactor fails. We shall most surely be destroyed by this. Our warrant madness lies herein. And then R2-D2 goes, beep, 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 meep, squeak, beep, 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 we. Then C-3PO goes, We're doomed. The princess shall have no escape this time. I fear this battle doth portend the end of the rebellion. Oh, what misery. And uh, what's cool is it's all done in iambic pentameter as well. I really enjoyed it. And he's done all of the Star Wars books. And I, th I think I saw as well, he's done uh, Much Ado About Mean Girls, which I haven't seen Mean Girls, but I kind of know the plot of it just from memes and pop culture and stuff. I actually, I probably will watch it at some point. Uh, remind me in the comments and, and me and Bex can, can maybe watch it and then I'll, I'll read Much Ado About Mean Girls. But yeah, I really enjoyed this. I gave it like a 4.5 out of five, it was great. All right, then we have The Children of Little Flopping by Ollie Jacobs and uh, this is like presented as the, as the gimmick of its uh, original book by Howard Williams provided courtesy of the BPD, which is the Bureau of Paranormal Defense. And basically it's sort of set like almost, I think during the 1950s and it's kind of like Day of the Triffidsy, except also like there's just a lot of debauchery and like all these uh, men who think they're gentlemen are like the worst people ever. And like Jacobs knows this as well. This is the kind of book that I think it's a risk to write as a male because <laughs> you could easily get a backlash because you've literally got like, let me read some of this. So I'm gonna read you this, this example here. Um, I hardly saw what calisthenics would do to help the women of Little Thwopping, but a good thrust of exercise often helped cure any maladies. Why, I had often engaged Beatrice in intercourse when she was at her most tender. Those tears and horrible memories soon soaked away with a good five minutes of rhythmic movement. And li lines like this, uh, After the frightful mess that became of Brian, it was not an exaggeration to say that panic was in full flow. Hysterics were being ordered on everyone's menu, with gay Brian himself flailing like a manic chicken. Even a firm slap across the face didn't stop his mania, and it took a good three burly men to pin him down. That seemed to do the trick. But yeah, I mean, that's all kind of deliberate as well, so you've got these, it's just this sort of hyper-accentuated, like, 1950s, uh, uh, you know where, you know how, you know what the 50s were like with men sort of ruling their women and all of this debauchery, yes, what, what, let's go down to the country club and smoke cigars. Uh, and basically what happens is there's that, like this, all the women suddenly all become pregnant at the same time and then they all give birth to like these alien babies that fire laser beams out of their eyes. It's great. I'm going to read you the blurb, I suppose. Uh, the year is 1952 and the town of Little Thwopping is prospering. The menfolk are working hard, the womenfolk are keeping the homes in order, and literally nothing can go wrong. In fact, things go horrifyingly right when every woman in Little Thwopping falls pregnant. Sure, the resulting children are 15 feet tall with bone-crunching long limbs, scr scream in human roars and shoot lasers from their eyes, but every child goes through teething problems. Written by Will Taven's resident author, Howard Williams, The Children of Little Thwopping is a fun tale that will leave you rolling on the floor and nodding with much thought. 
The BPD would like to clarify that this book is a piece of material found in conjuncture with their investigation into P1983 and brought to publication with the help of Ollie Jacobs. So yeah, I enjoyed this one. I gave it like a 3.75 out of 5, but I don't think it'd be everyone's cup of tea. You kind of have to like that kind of humour, I think. Then we have The Sun and Her Flowers by Rupi Kaur. This is poetry, and I kind of went into this not expecting to like it. I think partly because it's very hyped, and historically I don't have much luck with very hyped books. Uh, also partly because she's been described as kind of like an Instagram poet, um, and... I think a lot of the people who really like Rupi Kaur are people who tend to say like, oh, I don't read much poetry, but I really like enjoyed this one. However, I did enjoy it. I gave this like, well, I gave it like a 3.5 out of 5 and I definitely read some more of her stuff. She kind of re reminds me a bit of like a feminist Charles Bukowski and I wrote in my review that both Rupi Kaur and Charles Bukowski would probably both hate that comparison, which I just think makes it even more apt, you know? I'll read one of the poems, why not? Uh, I, I guess this one doesn't have a title. My God is not waiting inside a church or sitting above the temple steps. My God is the refugee's breath as she's running, is living in the starving child's belly, is the heartbeat of the protest. My God does not rest between pages written by holy men. My God lives between the sweaty thighs of women's bodies sold for money, was last seen washing the homeless man's feet. My God is not as unreachable as they'd like you to think. My God is beating inside us infinitely. So yeah, I mean, I think what she does well is she doesn't use many words and creates a picture with them And that's what I like with poetry plus it's free verse and I'm down with free verse So it did kind of get a little bit repetitive at times because a lot of them are like on similar te topics of like love and loss and whatnot um, That one I quite enjoy because that one's kind of I guess It relates that back to religion and other stuff. So uh, yeah, the only thing I didn't really like is her illustrations in it But hey ho Actually, though, the illustrations did remind me of Leonard Cohen because he used to illustrate a lot of his poetry books in, like, a similar style as well. Then we have the book I read today. I actually started it yesterday and finished it today. This is Hickory Dickory Dock by Agatha Christie. I'll read you the blurb. Hercule Poirot doesn't need all his detective skills to realise something is troubling his secretary, Miss Lemon. She's made three mistakes in a simple letter. It seems an outbreak of kleptomania at the student hostel in which her sister works is distracting his usually efficient assistant. Deciding that desperate times call for desperate measures, the great detective agrees to investigate. Unknown to Poirot, however, desperation is a motive he shares with a killer. And what I thought was cool about this is that, well, for a start, the characters, I think, really came, came alive in it. And the kind of the interactions and the relationships between them all were all very important to the storyline. But there was also just lots of cool stuff about, like drug smuggling and like communism and false passports and all this stuff and uh yeah it's just one of those christie books that kind of stuck with me i think i mean i know i only read it today but as i was reading it i could hardly put it down and like I say i could kind of visualize all of the characters all of the locations that, that were in there and all, all around it was just damn good murder mystery so i gave it a 4.5 out of 5. And that brings me to what I'm currently on, which is Dark Matter by Blake Crouch. I uh, picked this up in a charity shop not too long ago. I know this is a super hyped one as well. I'm only like 25 pages in, but I am enjoying it so far. And I look forward to seeing what else it has to uh, to, to say. Because basically, I'm, I'm, I haven't got to the blurb yet, really. Uh, I think it says, he wakes up. Are you happy in your life? Those are the last words Jason Desson hears before the mass abductor knocks him unconscious. Before he gently wakes to find himself strapped to a gurney surrounded by strangers in hazmat suits. And that hasn't happened yet. Although he has been abducted. So there's that. Alright, and anyway, on that note, I think that seems like a good place to finish this vlog. So as always, thanks a lot for watching. Don't forget to hit that like button if you've enjoyed this video. Let me know in the comments if you've read any of these books. Hit that like button. You've, I've already said that one. Hit subscribe for more and I'll see you soon for another bookish video. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.